and welcome back to Tech Tuesday. Last night on the live feed, Michael McClung had a great question and it got me thinking about how I use paint brushes. These Winsor Newton brushes that I talk about a lot, these Winsor Newton Series 7 brushes, I probably use these as much as I use an airbrush. And what's interesting is I've done a lot of airbrush classes and teaching and there is a specific way that you kind of teach people the basics about airbrushing, the basic strokes, those foundational strokes that really kind of help you understand how the tool works and kind of get you on your way. I thought about that in the perspective of the paintbrush and I realized I've never really had that. I've been using paintbrushes for my whole career, really my whole life. Uh, my uncle was a watercolorist, so I was exposed to these brushes really early on and I got a lot of great lessons from him, but we never really talked about specifics on, on brushes other than just taking care of them. So it really got me thinking about what I do with these things and, and one, how important they are, and two, how I get what I need to get out of them. So I thought I'd share some of that with you uh, on this Tech Tuesday. So again, this is a watercolor brush. Different brushes work differently. I'm going to show you what I do with this brush and the paints that I use. You're going to find that each brush has a different kind of spin on it, depending on what you're painting with, the viscosity of it and all that. Pinstriping, just if you want an extreme, just look at pinstripers. They have brushes that have very, very long bristles and very short handles. It takes a very specific technique. So it's individual, but I'm going to show you kind of how I get what I get out of these brushes, and hopefully that'll help you. All right, so let me move the painting from last night. And I'm going to do everything right here. Now I have a separate palette that I use. If you've watched any of the feeds, you'll, you, you would have seen it. And I do a Tech Tuesday on the wet palette that I use. But what I need to do is for this, I want you up close. And using the palette cam isn't going to work. So I'm going to need two things, which are pretty straight ahead. You need some sort of reducer. So this is the reducer for the paint that I use. It's 4011 for the Wicked colors. So if you're using watercolors, obviously it's water. If you use like oil paints, it's mineral spirits, that kind of thing. You also notice that the, <laughs> it looks like you're at an angle, but you're really almost not. The desk is almost flat right now. It is at a slight angle. You can see that in the reducer. I just thought I'd mention that. So you didn't think you were losing your mind with the reducer at an angle there. And then I'm going to just put out black since it's easy to see. So I'll put some black in here. Okay, so hopefully you saw that paint come out and how it's sitting there. It's fairly thick right now, and that's the way it's supposed to be. It's designed to work through an airbrush or all its different kinds of airbrushes. So they start the, they start the viscosity, the thickness. It'll work for most general airbrushes, and then you have to kind of work with it from there. So even in the airbrushes that I use, I have to reduce this because it's so thick. So if I just put the paintbrush in here and then just kind of drag it across, it, I'll be able to get a certain type of line out of it, and and that's pretty much it it'll be you know it'll be what it'll be to get really thin lines sometimes this is too thick for this so what you end up needing to do is reduce it a little bit so reducing the brush or the paint and then introducing it in the bristle of, bristles of the brush is called palleting so i'm going to take a little bit of reducer here and if this is the palette uh, I'm just going to kind of put some paint out and what I'm going to do is I'm going to work the paint all the way up into the bristles. So I'm just going to keep doing little mini passes in it until the whole brush is filled with paint. Now as I'm doing this, this paint is drying out. I can feel it. And the way I can, you can feel it, but then you can also see it too. As you pull the brush, it'll just kind of stall. So what you need to do is you need to add a little bit more reducer to it. And what you're looking for, what I'm looking for, is the paint to just kind of move when I put the brush in and then immediately stop and you'll see if it's too wet you'll move it and it'll kind of slosh around you'll see it pool up on one side if it's too dry you'll feel it. it'll be like dragging through the through the paint so that's the, the that's the number one thing I think in the beginning it's being able to reduce the paint so it works with the brush and that you can palette the entire bristle all the way up to the ferrule so that's important because that's kind of the fuel tank for your brush. If there's paint all the way up into the bristle, then when you go to start your stroke, the paintbrush will draw paint from that from the bristles up top. And that's what keeps it going. If you don't palette the whole brush, you're going to be able to you can do small things, you know, if you're doing small details, you can just palette part of the brush. 
but for any kind of long longer lines you need to you need to really palette the whole brush and that's that's the trick so get used to doing that uh, make sure you have something to clean the brush out i have a i have a container right next to me with water in it so keeping this brush clean during this process is really important you don't want to let paint dry in there if it does you just have to clean it out really well again that's your fuel tank the top of the brush if that's all filled with dried paint the paintbrush won't work correctly all right so that's number one it's palleting the brush and i wish i could say it's this amount of reducer and this amount of paint but it's not it's really a feel thing and that's what you got to do so palette the brush and then start doing some some different things with the brush you know try to get longer lines with it if you're not getting longer lines or like this if they're really really like faint and too thin you'll know you have to add a little bit of paint and what's going to happen is after a while you will get used to it it's one of those things that i find it's difficult to explain to someone but once they get started with it you get a feel for what's going to be right as far as how thin the paint needs to be and, and what you need to do with it sometimes you do need the paint real thick if i'm covering like opaquely covering an area you know i'll want the paint almost straight out of the tube or bottle in this case and that'll give me a really nice dense opaque layer or i can't do that if it's really super thin so again it's there is no rules that's what's nice about it there are some tips you can do and some tricks you can do but you know it's it's really comes down to personal feel when you're paletting the brush as far as the way i hold a brush it's pretty standard it's the way i hold a pencil um, what i found is I, I anchor my finger or my pinky finger on the surface and that's what really keeps things steady and it's just something I've always done. It's, it's just a natural feel for me. I don't know when I picked that up or how I picked that up, but, uh, but it works well for me. So I kind of just anchor my pinky there and then I can pivot my other fingers around that. It really keeps things steady. You can also, if you watch pinstripers, I do this a lot too. So you can actually steady your, your one hand with another and that'll help you like pull a, well, I'll show you. It'll help you pull a, a smoother line or just do repetitive, you know, strokes. So I'm going to palette this up again, get it all nice and filled. It's a little bit thin, but this will work for what we're, what we're doing. So if I'm, I'm doing something that I need a little bit more control, a little bit more steady feel, again, because the, uh, your muscles in your hand, or no, I'm sorry, there are no muscles in your hand. The, the bigger muscles that control the, the, you know, your actions, don't have the same finesse that the the uh, smaller muscle groups have so this kind of helps you steady things and all i'm doing is pinching my knuckle as i'm pulling the brush so that really helps me steady everything up and in incidentally this hand is also on on the surface so this hand is braced my pinky goes down and then i'm, I'm ready to do you know all these repetitive controlled lines that kind of thing the way the brush produces the line and the thickness is pretty obvious you know the the harder you push push on a brush the thicker that line will be so you do get a lot of great advantage out of practicing with different pressures on the brush so if you just have the very end of the brush on you'll get the smallest line it can do and again the only thing i can tell you is the way to get this down is to just sit there and do a bunch of lines and you know, and dots and things. And that'll help you understand what the brush can pull off and what it looks like. You know, this brush will only do a, you know, a line that's about that thick. That's the thickest it can do. The other thing too is the way the brush works. Again, remember that the bristles are its fuel tank. I'm gonna clean this out because it's starting to dry out. So the way you get this started is the paint actually gets pulled off the brush. So when you first touch the surface, that makes the contact on the paint and that starts the, basically starts the paint flow if you want to think of it that way. As you pull the paintbrush, then the paint gets pulled off the, the bristles, pulls out of the bristles onto the surface. So, so it's real important to kind of get the brush started, you know, get that paint on the surface first. Let me pal it up a little bit show you what I mean. First thing you do is you kind of get that paint on the surface and then you can start pulling it and that's what really does it. So it, again it's just it's just a matter of kind of practicing it, you know, touching it, getting it started and then and then pulling the line that you want to pull. 
what happens is in the beginning, when you go to do that, you'll leave a little dumbbell shaped at the beginning. It'll be like a, like a, you know, like a, a larger dot of paint and then the line. But as you get more used to it, that dot of paint at the beginning will just kind of disappear. You know, you'll, you'll get used to being able to pull immediately. So it's, that's, that's the kind of mentality that I use. You know, I kind of get it started and then I pull the line. And when you do that, like I said, that, that starts the whole process of that paint pulling out of the bristles, the capillary action that causes that paint to come off of there. It's the same way that a fountain pen works, you know, like a dip pen. Um, you can't just start writing with it. You got to get that ink onto, from the nib onto the paper first. And then once that happens, then you can start your line. And I know it sounds really straightforward and basic, but it's huge. It makes a big difference in the way that the brushes perform. Okay. So that's, that's what I got there. So paletting, I am, I was saying it last night on the feed. I am not a big fan of the type of thing where, you know, it's like repetition practicing type of thing, but there's, is a lot of great things that can happen by that. So essentially you'll take your brush and say, you want to get your thin lines down. So what you'll do is just take a 15, 20 minutes each day and painting these over and over again and the more you do this the more you'll get used to the brush get used to the paint and your your lines will just simply get better and better because you'll be becoming more familiar with what's going on with it again i don't work well that way i would like to learn a technique and then immediately start applying it to the painting again i said last night that's not a great way to do it because you're actually practicing on an actual piece but I, I like to just kind of take the thought and kind of start applying it. You know what I mean? Not full blast, maybe. Maybe I'll just start like getting the feel for it down in a painting. But then as I get going, that's where I practice it. And again, as long as you're not doing something major on a major piece that you've never done before, it, it works out pretty well, especially with these kind of mundane technique type things. Again, you, you learn the way you learn best. So you guys know what way you're going to get it down best and and that's the way you should attack it one other thing too with with the brushes at, and i'll just kind of end with this good quality brushes make a huge difference so these brushes are not the cheapest brushes on the market but in my opinion they're they're the best i've ever used for this type detail stuff these are again these are watercolor brushes they're not intended for acrylic paints but the, the way I use really super thin paint, these work really, really well. The downside is these weren't designed, well, they're not designed at all. They're sable, so they're natural hair. But these, the bristles on this brush form better with uh, like watercolors and things like that, really thin material. The acrylic ba paints tend to dry in them very quickly. So knowing that is a good thing because then that allows me to really keep this brush clean. And that's the most important thing with this brush. Normally with watercolorists, it's great. You rinse it out at the end of the day with clean water and you're ready to go. This time with the acrylic paint, you really have to make sure you get that acrylic out. It's not disastrous if it dries solid because there are great products that will clean that paint out of that brush, like Createx Restorer or Winsor Newton sells a brush restorer. But those things will help you really keep the brush clean. But that's the only way this brush works is if it's clean. If it gets all gummed up, um, it's just not going to perform the way that you want it to perform so keep that in mind too it's one of those things maintenance on this is super easy but it's also really really important all right so i hope that gave you a little bit of insight into uh the magic of paint brushing <laughs> i'm gonna have to dig deep maybe i can come up with a little bit more solid program for uh getting down the finest finest stuff with this brush and brushes like it but uh that'll be for another video so all right if you enjoyed this i hope you did hit that like and subscribe and let other people know that might be uh, interested in this. And as always, thank you to my YouTube members and my Patreon members. You guys are the best. And I will um, catch you all next time. For Steve Leahy and Tech Tuesday, have a great week.